Good evening, gospel revolutionaries around the whole world. Welcome to the bonus room above my sister's garage. Uh, we're going to have a good uh, time this evening going into Romans chapter 9. We're going to begin in uh, verse 13 and uh, see what Paul had to say about uh, some very important issues. Uh, we have been comparing the gospel to mere Bible, and we've been comparing the gospel to Global Grace Seminary, Don uh, Keithley and uh, the guys who teach there. There is a difference between the gospel and mere Bible. There's a difference between the gospel and what Global Grace Seminary teaches. Uh, there's a difference. There's the gospel, and then there's what these guys teach. Uh, so, and I want to show you th that. I want you to be able to see this very clearly for yourself. And we're going to touch on Mirror Bible tonight and just uh, kind of show you what, uh, uh, how that uh, these verses have been, uh, first off, ignored, and then also in Mirror Bible have been completely mistranslated. Uh, and we can prove that to you. Now, are we out just to prove somebody wrong? No, we're out to prove that the gospel is real. We're out to prove that the gospel is that what Paul said it is. It is the power of God. It is the testimony of God. It is a story, and the story all fits together. It's important to get the story right, because that's what it is. That's what good news is. It's a story. And uh, all stories have power. This one happens to be the power of God. I don't care if it's Lion King. It has a story, and it's filled with power. It's not the power of God, but it's very powerful. How many of you have ever heard somebody say, boy, that movie was really powerful, or that book was powerful, or that was a very powerful story? Why do they say that? Because stories contain power. It just so happens the gospel is the power of God. Now, if you were to take Lion King and remove one of the characters, would it still be able to be as powerful as it is? It just would not be if you took the, the, uh, uh, took the characters out or if you took the story and decided you really didn't like that part where the hyenas were. <laughs> uh, but you see, it takes away from the power of the story. So we are appealing to everyone, whether it's Christian, you know, let's accept the story. It's funny because we're having to uh, convince uh, uh, Francois and uh, the uh, Global Grace uh, Seminary, we're having to try to convince them that the story is there. Christians were having to try to convince them the story ended 2,000 years ago. Is done. <laughs> That's why Jesus said it is tetelestai. It is finished. It is a powerful term. And we need to recognize the story in the beginning and tetelestai. I don't know how that's so complicated. Uh, but I want to show you this. I think it's very powerful here. And uh, Daniel and I went through uh, Romans chapter 8 quite a bit. I'm, I'm sure that we'll go through some others here uh, in this upcoming show, uh, that'll be coming out on Friday, but I want to go into this with, just with you and I right now. We're going to leave Daniel out. I bet he's going to try to get in on it when they, we come back around this Friday. Uh, it's hard to jump in. As you know, it's also very difficult for me to read from my computer. I'm used to having my Bible. I'm a Bible guy. And it's like, where's my Bible? I left it over at my apartment. I took it over there to study some, so I left it there. Uh, but I'm going to be reading from uh, my, uh, my Bible online. And so if I am uh, more uh, halting and hesitant than normal, uh, then I, I'm going to defer to this. At least I have something to blame now, right? So starting in Romans chapter 9, verse 13, it says, As it is written, now, what he's doing is that he is quoting uh, uh, from the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 21, 15. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Now, uh, first off, we just we have to stop right there. I never thought we'd ever have to stop and say, 
what does hated mean? Uh, so, what you know, we look up the Greek word, and you know what hated means in Greek? It means hated. <laughs> now, let me read to you what uh, Francois did in his, uh, and, and this, is not a, this is not a thought for thought. This is not a uh, translation uh, whatsoever. And it's not even paraphrased because this just simply is not in there. It says, uh, we should say that Esau had the raw deal. He was disliked while Jacob was favored. So uh, Francois has taken the word hated and turned it into disliked. Now, that same word, just to show you how erroneous this translation is of the word hated, I'm going to take you through the verses. There's 12 verses in the New Testament that are the word hated, uh, plural. There are 38 altogether between hated and the word hate. Uh, so if it's hated, it's, it's this same word, misio. Sounds like misery to me. Uh, but it's the word misio in the, in the Greek. And I want to point out to you just a couple of places. One of the ways that you can, uh, that's very good, at least for some direction, you, you, you have to use context. You have to use the, uh, the Greek. You have to, uh, we need to study those things. And, but one of the really helpful tools is to see the other places where this word was actually used, the same Greek word was used. It's very telling. It can help you when it seems like the word may mean something one way or the other, you can see. And if it can be used one way or the other, then it'll show up in those translations where that it is uh, actually based on the context of the sentence that it actually means more this than it does that. There are Greek words and Hebrew words that are like that. And there is that structure in the New Testament uh, and the Old Testament, uh, called the Old Testament and New Testament. I got corrected by Glenn on that. Uh, we'll cover that at, at another time. Uh, but uh, I would just wanna glance down through here uh, and show you where the word hated, misio, is used. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. I'm not going to read all, all the way through them. You know the verses. And you shall be hated of all name, uh, nations for my name's sake. Uh, and the third time, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. That was Matthew, Matthew and Mark. In Luke, uh, it is that, but his citizens hated him and sent him a message saying, we will not have this man reign over us. Uh, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. So the word hated is in here uh, many times. Uh, and Jesus said, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. So now let's put Francois' translation into this. If the world dislikes you, you know it disliked me before it disliked you. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is funny. Uh, it says, uh, but now you have both seen and hated both me and my father. Uh, so let's put Francois's translation. You've disliked me and you've disliked the father. There's just no story here, folks. Uh, uh, they hated me without a cause. They disliked me without a cause. Now, if this, if any of these places where the word misio was used, the term dislike was used by the translators, they might be a modicum of reason to water this word down to something less than what it says. It says hated. Now I know you hate that. It's funny that those uh, that, that those who are into Mirror Bible and Global Grace, they hate this. They hate this. Uh, they don't dislike it, they hate it. <laughs> and uh, it says, as it is written, and this is what we've just read, Romans 9, 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 1, verse 9, thou hast loved righteousness, and this is about Jesus, and you've hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above all thy fellows. But Francois would say, thou hast loved righteousness and disliked iniquity. Hmm. Do you see that there is something deliberate 
in the intent to whitewash this word. It in no place is translated anything like what Francois has done in Mirror Bible. You say, but Mike, I just can't accept that God ever hated or uh, did any of those things, even dislike. Uh, you still got some explaining to do <laughs> here, Lucy, uh, if it's even disliked because God is love. How could he dislike anyone? You see, watering it down doesn't change the story except that it changes the story. Verse 14, what shall we say then? Is, is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. And it's really weird because there's no translation for this. After it says God forbid, the Greek has genome after that. So if we put that into this, it wasn't translated. I've never seen this before in my life. I have never seen a Greek word stand alone with no translation in the King James Version of the Bible. I don't know about other versions. So you've got to hear the power of what Paul is saying here. Paul's saying, God said, Jacob I've loved, Esau I've hated, but does that make God unrighteous? God forbid. You see, here's the thing that my friends have caused their minds to wander in this, is they've decided that if God was ever angry or ever hated or ever did anything other than what our Christian minds think is right or wrong, that if God ever did that, he would be unrighteous and unholy. In fact, Daniel asked one of the graduates from the uh, Global Grace School, uh, he asked them, if God ever did any of the things that were in the Old Testament, if God hated or if God uh, uh, killed anybody, if, if these stories are true, do you think God would still be holy and righteous? This was the reply. I don't think so. Oh, we're judging God to be unrighteous based on his works and turning around and expecting God not to judge us based on our works. I'm sorry, I'm excited again. <laughs> and my nose turns white when I do that. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to try a little bit of makeup there, I suppose. Uh, I'm too forthcoming, goodness gracious. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid, genome. Now, the only way to put this in there, just looking at it, it's not only is God not unrighteous, God is the originator of righteousness. He is righteousness. Genome, I don't know why it has no translation. I'm just telling you, it don't. Jackie, you're watching here. Get out your Bible and try to figure this out for me because I don't have a clue. I just know what genome means. And in the context, genome is all as well as words that is identifiable as to what it means based on the subject being spoken of. So we're talking about God being righteous or unrighteous. So the only thing that it can possibly mean uh, at glance here is that God is righteousness. He is the originator. He is the one who is righteous. He can't be unrighteous because of something he does. And see, that is the powerful thing you got to get out of this. You're not unrighteous in God and Christ because of what you do anymore. You're not right because of what you do, because in him we live and move and have our being. I'm, I'm I'm turning into the preacher, I know, but I sometimes can't help it. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Now, see, Christians use this then and say, see, God will have mercy on some people and then not have mercy on some other. But you're taking that out of context. We're talking about the first creation and the last creation. We're talking about those under Adam and those under Christ, which is brought out in chapter 8 very clearly. Me and Daniel will put this all together for you, uh, hopefully even a little bit more coherently than what I'm doing right now. Uh, uh, he says, so then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but God that showeth mercy. So you see, the, the issue here is that there was a time 
when God didn't show these guys any mercy. I mean, goodness gracious, you can read the story for yourself. Uh, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh. So who did he not show mercy? He didn't show any mercy on Pharaoh. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee. How did he show his power in uh, in Pharaoh? Uh, because, because all of these things were designated by God. through. I know, I know my mystic friends just shudder to the core. But for the moment, let's pretend the story is correct. Let's pretend the story really is the power of God. Could we be skipping out on the understanding from the scriptures and the work of the cross, how to get rid of our anger, our anger, our jealousy, our vengeance? I think that's more than a possibility to tell you the truth. Uh, that my name might be de declared in all the earth. Therefore, have he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and will uh, and whom he will, he will hardeneth. Now, this is not a comparison between the people that's got it right and the people's got it wrong, the people do it right and the people do it wrong. This is a comparison uh, between the before the cross and after the cross. And now we've been shown nothing but mercy. We've been shown nothing but mercy for the entire human race. And Christians want to dole it out. It's like we are, we really, churches are the keepers of God's righteousness and they dole it out as prescribed by their doctrine. Mm, my nose is getting whiter. <laughs> uh, not going to surprise me if, Daniel doesn't name this this one uh, Michael the White Nose Preacher. Uh, <laughs> Nay, but O oh man, who art thou that repliest against God? Uh, shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why did you make me this way? And that is what the uh, the mystics are saying. They're saying that God had no right to do this, that there's no difference between Adam. They literally tell you that there's no difference between Adam and Jesus. Jesus is the revealer of how wonderful Adam was. And eh, thanks for playing. It's not in the scriptures. But I know the scriptures don't mean diddly squat to you guys. So even when I point out it's not in the scriptures, you don't care. You just don't care that it's not in the scriptures. Now that's okay too. Because according to the gospel, you're still holy and righteous and perfect regardless of how ridiculous uh, of an insight that we might have. Even mine could get absolutely ridiculous. But God sees us in Christ and those things in the realm of us. And I don't even like saying that God sees us. God looks out of us. He doesn't see us. Uh, which I really love the mystics for trying to bring that point out. That's that's a very valid point that is that it is in the scriptures. What if God, willing to show His wrath and to make known His power, known uh, uh, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Wow, we just went into a, a study of the word finished when in Genesis 2, 1, and the word finished literally means created to be destroyed. That's what he said about the entire heavens, the earth, and the host thereof, that they were finished. Uh, I hope that you saw that last uh, uh, teaching that we just did on that. It's very, very powerful. Well, this is just kind of following up on that. They were fitted to destruction. And that's what the word uh, finished means, fitted, uh, fitted for destruction. Uh, and the word fitted means prepared, uh, uh, joined together, <laughs> joined together for uh, destruction. Uh, uh, that's what it means. It means to fit or frame something to where that it includes all. And under the old covenant, see, all were included. How are they all included? There's none righteous, no, not one. How are we all included? There's none unrighteous, no, not one. <laughs> we're not looking for a merciful God. 
And your situation and your prayers does not mean that you are receiving or not receiving the mercy of God. The mercy the human race needed was poured out upon us 2,000 years ago. It's time for us to show some mercy. It's time for us to show uh, the, the, the power of God in us, not in our conduct, but how we, first off, you got to accept yourself. Now, I've got family members watching right now. And they know that my big problem was I couldn't accept myself. You think anybody can, can condemn me for uh, being gay any more than I condemned myself? Ask my family. Three attempts of suicide, uh, six terms in mental institutions and lockup wards. Uh, down here, 10 minutes, 15 minutes from this house. At least about three of them were down there. Shock treatments. 15 minutes down the highway here. I went through shock treatments as a young boy. I first turned there for help because I thought the, the, my problem was the fact that I was gay. But I found out the problem was the Christianity that I taught was condemning me. And I needed to know the gospel, not Christianity. Christianity seems to always lead to some form of oppression in people's lives because there's always the rules. There's always the rules. He says, I've not spoke this much on this subject and I don't know when, if I have. He says, uh, prepared, uh, uh, he hath prepared unto, to those of us that he's prepared uh, before unto glory. So all of this was planned out. He had this, and it was before this comparison that we had this powerful and lively understanding. Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. And he saith also in Osi, I will call them my people, which are not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it uh, shall come to pass that in the place where it is said unto them, you are not my people. Now, it says that in the covenant, in the, uh, in the old covenant. But you see, what mere Bible and these guys go back and try to say is, oh, no, it didn't say you're not my people because everybody's God's people. Well, no, that's not true. But here he's explaining that the place where it does say you're not my people, in the same place, they're going to be called the children of God. Do you know the first child of God on planet Earth was Jesus Christ? Firstborn, only begotten of the Father. And then you start this silly stuff of going back and saying that Adam was a son of God. I am sorry, folks. We're glorifying Adam and dishonoring Christ. They are. <laughs> uh, there's good news in the gospel. And yes, there was a lot of terrible things happened, but it was foreordained by God. You say, well, I don't understand that. Well, who are you? Who are you to say to God, how dare you do it that way? My question is, how dare you accuse God of being unrighteous for his actions or his deeds recorded in the Old Testament and then want to not be judged for your actions and deeds according to the New Covenant. That's a little strange, folks. Let's leave strange behind. I'm weird enough. White nose and all. I know Sharon's laughing at me. <laughs> I do love you guys. We are looking for truth and <clears throat> willing to change minds. It's just like, please, this is all we got to do. I, I wrote out several questions to one of their students and they will not reply. Maybe they've not had time. We'll say it that way. 
Uh, but it's just all of a revelation. Well, I got it by a revelation. And uh, a revelation is fine. I'm not saying they don't come, but when they totally disagree with scriptures, you need to leave your revelation in the dark room where you found it. I love you guys.